So here we're back on the Lansing. Uh, the light is a bit better today. Yesterday we found that the, uh, the plate is loose. See that? The problem is to get the bolts out, you need to take the wheel off. So what I'm going to do is I tackle out this thing on in the right position and once I take the wheels off, because I need to look at, it, at the brakes anyway, I will uh, I will address that and just drill the holes and then just grind it off. It's thick material, it's pretty thick, thick steel here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, we need a coupler for the brake line here, because for whatever reason this is taken apart. Uh, cut, actually, we have not much fluid leaks. I need, ah, I found the dipstick for the gearbox. Here is the gearbox dipstick. I'm pretty sure this is empty as well. The electrics are completely dead, I don't know. Nothing works really on the electrics. I think there is no. This is all mangled here, so there might be no ignition power. So ignition on, maybe doing, maybe just doing nothing. Um, my spanner is still there. Yeah, there is a lot of weird things happening. The power the hours meter doesn't work anymore. It shows 3,720 hours. Maybe that's when the meter starts stop working. Anyway, some fancy writing. Uh, but that's normal, that's what you find on, the, on these things here. And this was the holder for the drip tray. Because the engine was pissing like hell. Okay, let's blow the, the dirt off here before we take that dipstick out. And uh, carry on. Uh, just topping up transmission fluid, there was pretty much nothing in it. That's with most of the stuff here. Yeah. It's just empty. Uh, the specification is Dexron A, which we don't have, so we use Dexron 2. It's still pretty low. Uh, because you, you check it when it's running, so it's actually less when you run. So I'll just pour another half a liter in it. We're gonna change it anyway at some point. So I'll just pour in what we have. And uh, we got a little bit of Dexron 2, and I think the rest is Dexron T3. It's compatible. So. It doesn't really matter a lot because I had the feeling there was hydraulic fluid in it. That's it was very slimy and it smelled strange. So some moron may have dumped hydraulic oil into the gearbox, which is not a good idea. I heard people using SA30 engine oil, but I don't know if that's a good idea. So let's figure out what we have now. We need to check it when it's running, but it's gonna be it's gonna be over full when it's not running, like any other automatic transmission. So it's at least three quarter full now. So I have some more. So okay, now we need to address the hydraulic fluid because that's super low. Uh, a friend of mine got a swage tool for the injector line. He's gonna call me in an hour or so, so we're gonna we're gonna put a new nut on this injector line, uh, so we can fire it up and see what happens. We still need to dress the brakes, uh, and the throttle the throttle stop needs to be addressed as well because the stop is on the engine, so it shouldn't be that far. Uh, someone turned that out because it wasn't running, because it was only running on three cylinders or whatever. Uh, next thing we're going to do is valve clearance. I think we do that now uh, because he's going to ring me in an hour or so. Let's have a look and uh, do the valve clearance. The radiator looks surprisingly good actually. Looks like it's been changed for some time. The only problem is we have that diesel spill everywhere because there is the injector pump and the whole shit came. The fan was 
spraying everything around here. Sorry, it's a bit windy. Uh, so let's clean that out. It seems to hold water. There was water in it. I put some antifreeze in it. So um, yeah, one thing after the other. Yeah, it looks alright. The, the the crankshaft rear seal is leaking a little bit. Uh, let me clean out that diesel stuff here. And that's the hydraulic oil fluid level. As you can see, you can see nothing. There is still something in it, a little bit. So we're going to pump a couple of liters in it. And uh, luckily we got all the fluids here. All right, let's top that up and uh, hopefully that makes things better or it starts dripping even more. Who knows? I already poured five liters in and it's just at minimum now. So let's pour some more. I can't do that. I need two hands for that. Looking good now. Just on full. We'll see. It runs for a while. Engine oil is low as well. But uh, I'm gonna do the valve clearance first. I just need to find a way to get to the crank pulley to turn it over. Uh, because there is no way to do it from here. And uh, you know, we're still waiting for our friend to call me for the injector line. Alright. Okay, we checked the valve clearance and uh, it looks reasonably okay. It's 0.3 millimeters cold and we're all in the right ballpark. Nothing is too low. This one which is a little bit more, but honestly, 0.35 or so, I don't really care. So, we fixed one issue. We took the plasma cutter and just cut the broken part of the bolt out and run the tap through. We do the same at the bottom. The thread might not be nice anymore, so I just put a nut on the outside. It's a bit tight, but uh, yeah, with a ratchet spanner on the and a modified tap, it works. So let's do the bottom one and uh, another one sorted.
so we still have a leak in the injector pump but it runs nice now uh, has power because the problem before it was nothing up and also there was no fluid in the transmission it's got power it pulls away uh, the brakes don't work and the problem I had before I don't know if it was visible in the video my steering didn't work because I fixed that plate here uh, the holes and so the plate is now in place it's parallel the levers are a bit more in the middle now uh, forward reverse is still a bit odd there's a lot of play in the linkage down here everywhere I need to dress that but uh, that's a different story at least it goes forward and reverse now um, because it had absolutely no forward pulling power but the problem was uh, I just checked the oil level and it was low again I just put another liter or so in the reason is the torque converter was probably completely empty uh, there was only very little left he was driving better in reverse engine pedal works but the brakes need addressing probably do that tomorrow it's getting late now and cold anyway I'm happy so far the engine is a bit tired it takes a bit to start uh, because the flame heater doesn't work uh, we'll talk about that in another time um, you check the line is fitted um, yeah, what else to say it had a problem with going down it didn't go down all the way and uh, but now it seems to do it binding with a lot of junk at the bottom of the mast so it didn't go all the way down all right so yeah we've got quite a bit to do here um, but I did that's gonna be it for the day uh, yeah that was a good experience with the steering <laughs> I had no steering whatsoever because I think if you move that panel away the steering column comes out here steering works now um, yeah both tilt cylinders are leaking we need to look at that and then a bit of a grease job everything needs to be greased uh, we need to check how the rollers look like uh, there's quite a bit of play but yeah it, it, it's lifting quickly so it should be fine since you restored a bit of power on the engine the thing seems to work better okay uh, call it a day. Carry in tomorrow if it doesn't rain. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And